各位老师、各位同学早啊、uh, ，Good morning， 呃呃 ，Welcome to attending the BESA 呃呃 workshop this morning， and uh, uh, we are very very glad to uh, have chance to invite Dr. Obiel to come to Taiwan again. I think this is the second time. Second time. Right, <laughs> second time come to Taiwan, and uh, uh, Dr. Tobiel, his his Chief is very tightly in Asia. Yeah, she he just come from China to Taiwan uh, uh, yesterday, and uh, the uh, brain research is very hard uh, recently, re in recent year, and especially for the uh, EEG and analysis. So uh, we are we are invite uh, 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 Besa come to Taiwan to do the workshop. And he will, uh, Dr. Topai will share uh, uh, the key feature to us, and also uh, uh, also he brings some uh, the good opportunity for everybody. So the lab can, if you like, you can try, and he will explain to you later. We have the dongle can providing for a period of time. Yeah. And by the way, my name is Paul Chen, and uh, 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 we. Uh, in Taiwan for cooperating with BESA. We can uh, we hope we can do our best to uh, to assist in your research and to and bring up uh, the, uh, the, the the our Taiwan uh, research ability. And if you have after uh, during or after the workshop you need you can contact us anytime. Okay. So th thank you, Paul. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for being here in, China, in, uh, in Taiwan. I just arrived from China, as he said, and uh, I'm traveling a lot through Asia. And we'll travel to Singapore tomorrow, and then go on to Malaysia, and 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 somewhere in one and a half weeks I go back home. So once again, welcome. I want to show you some of the key features of BESA Research 6.0. This year there will be a major update of BESA Research as well. We will come out with the version 6.1 and by end of the year with the version 7.0, where we will extend a lot of features in that software. So, first of all, why using BESA? There are some questions. You want to use the most advanced methods for data analysis. In, in fact, BESA is, I think, the most uh, comprehensive software tool and offers the most, oh, yeah, quite a lot of different methods for pre-processing, for source localization, for a lot of ERP analysis, and, and, and everything around EEG analysis. That's the point uh, number two. The, I want a program that allows me everything from pre-processing to source analysis, to time frequency analysis, and source coherence. And another most important thing is the program is not difficult to use, but you have to be familiar with the program. The first try, I show you afterwards the program, you will be a little overwhelmed by the screen because there's almost nothing to see. And then afterwards, I show you what happens if you know how uh, know more about the interface of the software. And then you can easily use the software. I want to analyze a large number of data sets quickly. There comes the so-called batch processing in from our software, which means you can define a batch and run the batch on all of your different data files. And then you get all these files analyzed in the same way which doesn't mean you have to do no interaction because you are the scientist and if you are the scientist you have to make decisions whether this is correct or not. Then I want to be able to compute cross sub subject statistics from EEG results. That's really important for publication nowadays. Um, without statistics in a quite a lot of papers everything will be rejected. 
So they, they just throw you out. Peer-to-peer -peer review will not be successful. And then I want to be able to use realistic head models like a FEM model. This is a very crucial point as if you use the individual anatomy of a patient, a subject, whatever, um, source localization gets more robust and the results get more precise. So what we do basically is we do the complete circle from data review and pre-processing to co-registration with MRI if you have the individual MRI. This step is not a mandatory step, depends on your equipment. To ERP analysis and averaging, standard and individual realistic head models, again, depends on if you have an MRI. I will show you later on how to generate such a model. Source analysis and source imaging is not, it's also not a necessary step, depends on your research. Quite a lot of people are just interested in ERPs, so they don't need that one. But source localization, especially in Asia, is coming pre becoming pretty popular. Time frequency analysis and source coherence, what I told you, the batch processing, and cross-subject statistics. And afterwards, you can draw a line here, there's the publication. So that's actually the complete circle from, okay, there's one step here, you have to acquire the data somehow. But that's not a problem. If you acquire the data, we can read it in. I will show you afterwards which kind of EG formats we can read. That's a quite impressive number. Okay, oh, sorry. So that's basically one of the windows we have. You see the EEG waveforms, you see our 3D maps, and in this case you see a DSA, uh, a dense, <coughs> dense spectrum array analysis. And that's basically what you need for reviewing the data. You can also do trigger handling for sure, you can uh, set markers, set comments, whatever. Then we have pattern search and averaging. Very easy, you can see a spike here. This is an epileptic from spike. If I just map this spike, you see the map looks like this. I see that there is my cursor position, and you can see how the over the time this uh, epileptic form activity, which is intellectual finding, comes in and goes out. So it looks pretty good. If I take an average of eight spikes, you can see that it's getting more robust and the result is getting a little more focal. You can see it here. The blue dot is not as big as here. So you gain precision by averaging. That's a very interesting point, especially if it comes to epilepsy. And you want to know where the epilepsy is coming from. In this case, we have a temporal lobe epilepsy. Then suddenly we have spectral analysis like FFT. You can see the predominant frequencies in uh, in the in the of the uh, of the of the uh, channel of the respective channel. In this case, of the brain region. This is a source montage we have here. Then suddenly map again. You see again uh, uh, a spike which is more frontal than the other one, but still temporal. Then we come to co-registration. Why is co-registration interesting? You see there is a head, which is basically reconstructed from the MRI data, if you have it, and we have the 3D reconstruction of the brain. If you use the electrode set, and attach the electrode set to the individual head shape, then it's something different than to attach it to a sphere. And you can easily imagine that therefore you get a lot of precision. Because if you look at the sphere, it looks like this, and the electrode set is over here. 
And there's a longer way, maybe to a source which is here, there's a longer way than if I really take a head shape, it's a shorter way. So that, that makes a real difference. So please always be aware, if you have the data of the MRI, use it. It will gain robustness of your results. This is the interface of uh, BESA MRI. I will show you later on. You see here the workflow. You can see here uh, uh, um, information window. And here's the window where you do all of the manipulations, all of, all of the adjustments, whatever you like. And in this case, you see there has been generated a FEM model as well for the skull, the skull, the CSF, and the brain. And you can see the results displayed in a Talaira transformation and an ACPC transformation. Okay, what you see here is for your P analysis. That's a top view window. And what you can see here is that we can mark peaks. In this case, it's the P300, which is a pretty, uh, pretty famous uh, signal to expect. So this is a typical analysis window where you can see uh, the, the results of your P analysis. And I will show you later on as well, uh, on a short example, how we can use that for uh, this, uh, this screen. Then source analysis. You see a waveform here, including the, uh, the, uh, the noise and everything. And here you see a localization. You have there's a dipole has been fitted, and the dipole is fitting here. And you see this dipole is not explaining too much of the signal at the moment. Uh, it's not too much explaining the signal at the moment. So that's source analysis. I think they will have to do some more work <coughs> until this is ready. Then we have different kinds of distributed source analysis. We have the Lorita. We have the Escalita, Laura, Minimum Norm, SS Lofo, Clara. Um, Clara itself is a very, is an invention of BESA. Um, what we did, in fact, is we use classically Loretta analysis and apply it several times. I think it's five times. And what we do is we take the first Loretta, take the solution of the Loretta, and feed the second Loretta calculation with the same uh, with this result, and then we gain uh, robustness of the result, and we go, we get more focal results. Lorita, if you look at the results, normally pretty smeared out over the brain, and in this case, it's more focal results. And uh, Clara is actually the name of the daughter of the inventor, uh, Patrick Burke, has a, a daughter called Clara. And the thing about Clara is we needed then a name, well, a scientific name, which uh, means classic Loretta analysis re recursively applied, which means applied uh, one and one, over and over again. OK, and then we have a time frequency analysis available. <coughs> and certainly a coherence analysis. So you can see, is this source coherent with that source, and so on. You can analyze these things. Today, we will not have a chance to, uh, to go deeper into that one, because the time is too short for this. Normally, we make a workshop of around two to three days to introduce our customers to all of the functions. As you can see, we have a little more than two hours. So mm, it will be a little difficult to squeeze that in. Okay, and that's space of statistics. So that's rounding up the loop, in fact, in the end. You have uh, the possibility to, um, to, to, uh, to, uh, to calculate cross-subject statistics. And the very important thing about the end is you can get out of this data and export them and directly paste them into Word, whatever uh, software you use, in order to prepare your publication. So this nice uh, pictures can then be used in publication. Okay, some 
new key features in BASA research. We have ICA now, which is independent component analysis. We take it where you can take it for artifact correction. Uh, you can send the spatial components into the source analysis so you can see where the artifact maybe is coming from or the signal of interest is coming from. It's much more interesting. Um, you can uh, create IC reco uh, ICA reconstructed data only consisting of the selected ICA components. So you, you get out of the artifacts of some things you're not interested in and just uh, store the results and that's a new data set. We have the DICS, that's dynamic imaging, uh, dynamic imaging of coherent sources, according to Joachim Gross from Glasgow. Um, currently, one of my work, uh, one of my employees is doing his PhD thesis at Joachim Gross in Glasgow, and so we're working very close with the guys uh, about time frequency and co coherence analysis. And then finally, a very important thing, the FEM modeling, which means the finite element modeling. This has been developed in a, a cooperation together with the University of Münster in Germany. And this model is a very robust model and a very good model for uh, defining your individual anatomy. So you have the anatomy, you, can ma you make a FEM model out of it, and this is a form compartment fan model, as I said before, it's the, the skull, the, uh, the skull, the brain, and the CSF, the other way around, CSF and brain. And what you have then, if these four compartments, they have a different conductivity, and uh, because of the different conductivity, um, the signal uh, is changing, which you expect on the, on the, uh, the skull. Okay, so far, if you want to see more material, please go to our website, mm -hmm. www.bisa.de, for tutorials, lectures, and more. I want to draw your attention to a very special uh, part of this page. We have a science page as well on that page, which is pretty new. Um, there you can see a lot of our projects which are running currently. We just won a, a European Union grant with, together with five universities and three other companies. They are funding a child brain project for the next four years. And that's a pretty interesting thing. You might have interest in looking at it, so please go to the page. Uh, later on, I will give you another link to our FTP server. I will show you the link afterwards, uh, where you can find all of the data um, and all of the installations of BESA. Okay, so far.